Hello everyone. Today, we will be diving into the exciting world of ICT, which stands for Information and Communication Technology. ICT encompasses all the technologies and tools that we use to create, manage, store, and transmit information. To begin our lesson, let's first define what ICT is. ICT refers to the diverse set of technologies that enable us to process, transmit, and store information electronically. It includes hardware, software, networks, and digital content. Now that we have a clear understanding of ICT, let's explore its main components. The key components of ICT are 1. Hardware. This includes physical devices such as computers, laptops, tablets, smartphones, servers, printers, scanners, and other electronic gadgets. 2. Software. Software refers to the programs, applications, and operating systems that run on hardware devices. Examples include word processing software, spreadsheet software, presentation software, and database management systems. 3. Networks. Networks allow devices to connect and communicate with each other. We have different types of networks such as local area networks, LANs, wide area networks, WANs, and the internet. 4. Digital content. Digital content refers to multimedia materials such as text, images, audio, and video. This includes websites, ebooks, online articles, videos, and interactive media. Now let's discuss why ICT is important in today's world. ICT plays a crucial role in various aspects of our lives, including 1. Communication. ICT enables us to communicate and collaborate with others easily. We can send emails, use video conferencing tools, and engage in online chats to connect with people across the globe. 2. Information access. With ICT, we have access to a vast amount of information through the internet. We can search for resources, read articles, watch educational videos, and stay updated on current events. 3. Education. ICT has transformed the way we learn and gather knowledge. It provides us with online courses, multimedia presentations, interactive educational games, and virtual simulations, making learning more engaging and accessible. 4. Business and Industry. ICT is integral to the functioning of modern businesses. It enables organizations to streamline their operations, automate processes, store and analyze data, and reach a wider customer base through online platforms. Now let's look at some real-world examples of how ICT is used in different industries. In the healthcare sector, ICT allows medical professionals to access electronic health records, diagnose illnesses using advanced imaging technologies, and provide telemedicine services. In the transportation industry, ICT is used for tracking and managing logistics, optimizing routes, and improving passenger experience through online booking systems. Now that we have explored the various aspects of ICT, I will summarize the key points we covered today. ICT stands for Information and Communication Technology. It includes hardware, software, networks, and digital content. ICT enables communication, access to information, education, and innovation in various industries. We discussed real-world examples of ICT in healthcare and transportation. In our activity, we explore different sectors and their use of ICT. That's it for today's lesson on Introduction to ICT. I hope you found it informative and engaging. Remember to appreciate the power and importance of ICT in our daily lives. Thank you for your active participation, and I look forward to our next session. Hello everyone, welcome to today's lecture on Introduction to Computers. Today we will be exploring the fascinating world of computers and their significance in our daily lives. Let's begin by defining what a computer is. A computer is an electronic device that processes and stores data, performs calculations, and executes tasks based on instructions provided to it. Computers come in various forms, such as personal computers, laptops, tablets, and smartphones. Now let's delve into the main topics of today's lecture. We will be discussing the history of computers, the components of a computer system, and the various types of software that run on computers. Firstly, let's explore the history of computers. It is essential to understand how computers have evolved over time and revolutionized the way we live and work. We will be looking at milestones such as the invention of the first mechanical computers by Charles Babbage and Ada Lovelace's contributions to the field of computer programming. Moving on, we will examine the components of a computer system. A computer system consists of hardware and software components. Hardware includes the central processing unit, CPU, memory, input and output devices, and storage devices. We will discuss each component in detail and understand their roles in the overall functioning of a computer. Next, we will explore the various types of software that enable computers to perform specific tasks. Software can be categorized into two main types, 
System Software and Application Software. System Software includes the operating system, which manages the computer's resources and provides a user interface. Application Software, on the other hand, encompasses programs that perform specific tasks like word processing, graphic design, or playing games. To enhance our understanding, let's take a moment to view some visual aids in multimedia. Please take a look at the slides that provide diagrams and images illustrating the components of a computer system. You will also find examples of different software applications that we frequently use in our daily lives. Now let's move on to real-world examples and practical applications of computers. Computers are utilized in various fields such as healthcare, finance, education, and entertainment. We will examine how computers have improved efficiency and productivity in these sectors and learn about their impact on society as a whole. To encourage active participation and critical thinking, I would like you to think about the following questions. How has the proliferation of computers influenced your personal and professional life? Can you identify any potential drawbacks or challenges associated with our increasing reliance on computers? Feel free to share your thoughts and let's have a discussion. Before we conclude, let's recap the main points we have covered in today's lecture. We started by defining what a computer is and then explored the history of computers. We discussed the components of a computer system, including the hardware and software. We also examined real-world examples and the impact of computers in various fields. Thank you for your active participation, and I look forward to our next session.